championship of this year. From the dawn of time, my friend, death was the price for sin. It took a lamb without spot and without blame. But the blood of lambs couldn't set men free. God sent a savior down for me. That's when the shepherd gave his life for the sheep. And I walked out of this prison, my chain set free. I don't have to pay sins on the penalty. God was satisfied that day the shepherd gave his life for the sheep. Guilty, guilty was my plea. That old accuser said to me, I bear it God, I was lost as I could be. The Lamb of God can shine a light, just like a cloak in a cold, dark night. I found the shepherd gave his life just for me. And I walked out of this prison, my chains set I don't have to pay sins on the penalty For the Savior paid the price The wrath of God was satisfied That day the shepherd gave his life for the sheep Thank God the shepherd gave his life for the sheep Glad he gave his life for me. Turn in the Bible with me to the book of Matthew, chapter number 11. And Brother Joe was all over my message today, even quoted my scripture in the Sunday school class, so I guess that's confirmation from heaven. Matthew, chapter number 11. If you'll stand when you find your place for the reading of God's Word. We're going to read... Three verses here at the end of the chapter, 28 through 30. Matthew chapter 11, verse number 28. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Brother Joe, you pray for us this morning. Amen. Amen. You be seated. We find here this, uh, it's just a simple call. Uh, it, it's uh, the most important call you'll ever have in your life, and, uh, but it's the most simplest decision you could ever make. Uh, uh, people and men and, uh, and these uh, theologians and uh, these great doctors of high degree, they want to make salvation the most complicated thing in the world, uh, and they want to go into doctrines and stuff like that, and that's all good and well in its place, but there's a simple call that Jesus said, come unto me. And, uh, and that's, he's talking about salvation. He's talking about the opportunity to be saved from sin. 
Uh, now we find in the book of Matthew up until this point, uh, uh, Jesus preaches, uh, he's preaching on repentance, uh, and he gives the nation of Israel uh, his credentials uh, that he is the Messiah sent from God. And you'll find uh, that time and time again, even to this day, the nation of Israel rejects him as the Messiah, as the, the promised one from God. And I'm glad that they rejected him this morning, not for his sake, but for my sake. If it wouldn't have been for their rejection of him, uh, us uh, Gentiles, us lost people, hey, you're a Gentile if you're not a Jew. And I don't see any Jews in here this morning that I know of. And, uh, and I'm glad because of the rejection uh, 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 that they give that I have hope for life eternal in heaven. I have hope for my sins here today. And, and uh, you know what? I find it funny that Jesus does the finding, but you've got to step to him once he's found you. Uh, you've got to take the step unto him. He says, uh, uh, he says unto, here in verse 28, Come unto me. Uh, that, uh, I just want to break this down into the simplest terms that the littlest one to the greatest one could ever understand in this, uh, uh, in this sanctuary here today. Come. It comes from the Greek word uh, deut, uh, uh, D-E-U-T-E. It, com- it means come. Simply come. Come here. Follow me. Uh, if you've had a child or you've got children, uh, you know what that word come here means. Uh, uh, you understand what that, because they like to run out here, there, and everywhere. And you've got to say come here a lot. I found with Lillian, uh, she likes to run. And you can yell come all day long and she's going to run the opposite way. But you know what? Time and time again, I find that we're the same way with God. When he says come, we run for some reason. It's in our... For some reason, it's in the DNA uh, uh, that we want to run from God. Uh, But uh, it's a simple, uh, it means come here or follow. I like that word follow when it uh, it says come unto. Uh, And uh, you know what unto does? It gives you the direction of the place to go. There's a lot of places you could come to. Uh, You can come to church. uh, And uh, can I say to you, the best thing you can do for you and your family is come to church on Sunday morning and Sunday night uh, and Wednesday night. uh, And uh, you know why uh, some people claim that you don't have to go to church. uh, But you know what the word church means? It's a called out assembly of God's people. And I found one day that God called me out of the depths of hell uh, and and saved me. And I'm called out and we assemble ourselves together. Uh, Hebrews 10 25 says, uh, not, uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, uh, uh, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now I'm not t- trying to take away from your time uh, uh, or your life and what you got going, but can I say to you, there's an important day. Uh, there's a meeting day you're going to have uh, and, it's, uh, and it's called uh, the rapture. It's called uh, uh, the, judge, the great white throne judgment that we preached about. And, and you're going to stand before for God, and you say, well, I don't have to go to church to be saved, Brother Jacob. Well, that's true. I've never found in the Bible that it says I had to go to church, but if you love God, you're going to love God's people, and you know where you're going to find God's people? At church, and I'm glad you're here today. I ain't preaching to you. I'm preaching to the ones that ain't here today. I'm glad I found you at the house of God. And you say, well, that old preacher, he's preaching that old stuff again today. I don't want to hear that, but can I say to you, it's in the Bible, and I'm glad you found your way into an old-fashioned church here today. But it says unto. That gives you the direction uh, for where to come to. But he, and, and then he doesn't say just go anywhere. Uh, he didn't say go any place or to anyone. He says come unto me. Come unto me. I'm glad. And you know who the me is in that? I find my Bible, it's got red letters. You know who's talking when there's red letters? His name is Jesus. I, and those are the most important words you'll ever read in your life is those red letters right there. He says, come unto me. That's Jesus. You'll find out that Jesus said himself, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I, I, can I say, he doesn't say uh, that, uh, that you should go out uh, and find a self-help doctor. He doesn't say that, uh, uh, that you should go to uh, whatever it may be. Uh, and I know that, uh, the, the, that God has given knowledge and resources in this day and age. Uh, but I tell you, we're missing in the mark. We'll go and run everywhere and to everybody looking for help and we don't come unto him that said come unto me. We, I, we find ourselves, we won't come to the one that he said come unto me. And, and you know what? You'll find Jesus don't even want your money. You ain't got to pay a bill after it. I, every time I go to the doctor, it, sure enough I'll get a mail and a bill for a $30 copay every time. Hey, but I've never found that Jesus has ever cost me a dime. Uh, He's never cost me anything, but he says, come unto me. Uh, And and you know what he says uh, after that? He says, all. All. That's uh, that's an important word right there, all. You know what all means? It means everyone. And and you'll find another definition of all is whosoever. 
You know, over in John uh, chapter 3, verse 16, uh, whosoever, uh, and I'm glad that he says, come unto me all. Uh, that you'll find in the book of Romans that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I'm glad for, uh, for, that I'm an all. Uh, I'm glad that I was counted as one of those that all that could come unto him. But then he goes on after that and he says, ye. Oh, man, I, I, I like it when he uh, narrows it down and he makes it personal. You know what? Ye means it, it's getting personal. It's, uh, you're getting intimate uh, with a person. And, uh, and, uh, and when you, uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again, when you get in a crowd, it's easy to mingle in. You know, nobody wants to come up here and sing a solo song, but people mix in with choir because they get mixed in. They ain't gonna, you know, you, your voice ain't heard out as much. But there is going to come a day in your life if you're not already been called out by God, He's going to come to you. And He's going to show you. He's going to make a personal appeal to you. To, he, and He's going to say, come unto me. Follow me. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm glad for the day. Uh, as a 12-year-old boy, an old-fashioned altar, he said, uh, come unto me, Jacob. Uh, Jacob Carl Shelton, uh, come unto me. You're a sinner and you need saved. Uh, uh, but then he goes on and he says, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Uh, you'll find that uh, labor and heavy laden uh, is from sin is what he's talking about. Uh, uh, sin is labor intensive. Uh, and you know what the Bible says? Uh, the wages of sin is death. And uh, but sin it is labor intensive. Uh, you know what? It'll burden. It, it, it's so heavy. It will burden your soul down, uh, and not just your physical body, but your soul. Proverbs chapter thirteen verse fifteen says, "But the way of a transgressor's is hard." As Brother Tommy said just the other day, "Hey, if you're out in sin and you come in here lost today, you're burdened down uh, and you are heavy laden. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you might not think that it, it's all easy and uh, uh, life is just uh, easy going. Uh, uh, you're just doing life and stuff, but." Can and I say to you, you're going to find a point in your life that you're going to realize sin is weighing you down. Being lost is weighing you down. Uh, it's weighing your soul down. Uh, uh, the soul was not, uh, uh, was not made uh, uh, to be weighed down with the burden of sin, but we find Adam and Eve, they messed all that up for us. Uh, uh, but I tell you, there's, uh, he doesn't just stop there. He doesn't just say, come unto me, all you that are uh, laboring heavy laden. He says, and I will give you rest. You notice there's a source in the rest here today. He says, I. That, who is that? Jesus. <laughs> I'm glad that there's rest in a man named Jesus today. There's rest for your soul. Uh, uh, you come in here today uh, and you're lost as lost can be. And you know you're lost. Uh, uh, you come in here and you, you've been running like hell all week long. Uh, you've been out drinking and partying and going on and, and whatever it may be. Uh, but can I say to you, Jesus, give a call to you. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will will give you rest. I'm glad there's source for the rest. You know how I know that uh, uh, that sin is uh, it weighs you down? Uh, the book of Psalms uh, uh, talks about it. Psalms chapter 73 and verse uh, 17 through 19, it said, Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. He's talking about wicked people, sinful people. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment they are utterly consumed with terrors. Can I say to you, you're not finding rest if you're not saved here this morning. You know, you might think you find rest in a bottle, but uh, uh, or whatever it may be. Uh, we always refer to uh, uh, to alcohol, to drugs. Hey, it could be pornography here this morning. It could be a woman or a man. It could be uh, material things. Whatever you think's giving you rest, it's not. You know what you have to do. You have to keep going back for more. But you know what I found after the night that I got saved? I want more of Jesus, but I never had to have any more because He filled me up with all of Him that night. Uh, because He is the source of rest in our life. I can have rest at Him. Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, you find that these billionaires, uh, you'll see them on the TV uh, uh, all the time. Uh, they're always trying to find some new source of happiness in something, but they never find happiness anywhere. You know what? You'll find rich people, most of the time they're depressed, unhappy, and unrested. You know, uh, and you'll find uh, uh, that uh, you'll find that it, it doesn't matter what their wife or their husband looks like. They might have the uh, uh, what we consider the most beautiful wife ever, and you know what? They'll divorce them sure as the world and go find somebody else. Because there's no rest in sin. There's no rest for it. Uh, uh, but you know what? Sinners, uh, they are laboring. Uh, they're heavy laden because they have not come to a place where they meant the Prince of Peace. You know who the Prince of Peace here today is? His name is Jesus Christ. Uh, that source of peace comes from heaven. Uh, uh, you know why that you can't find rest if you're not saved here today? Because your soul's going to a burning hell. Hey, uh, if you're lost and you're not... Hey, uh, the Bible says if you're not for God, you're against God. Uh, and uh, and uh, 
it's just the truth of the matter, uh, but you'll find the rest uh, far beyond anything you can ever imagine once you meet a man named Jesus. You know what? I, you know what? I find uh, when I lay my head on my pillow at night, I can rest. Because I know where my soul's going if I don't wake up. I find rest. Uh, I can lay my head. Can you honestly, uh, and I'm not asking anybody to raise their hand, but when you lay your head on your pillow tonight, I want you to think, if I was to not wake up in the morning, if something was to happen, would I make it to heaven? See if you get any rest tonight. If you have to question it, uh, there's no rest in that. Because you know what salvation is? Uh, uh, it gives you a sense of security. Salvation lets you know that when you lay your head on your pillow not uh, uh, that uh, when you go to the next life, uh, uh, or when you go to heaven or hell, hey, uh, you know that you can make it, uh, that your soul will make it to heaven's rest. You'll find rest. Uh, but you, I want you to notice the order that it comes in. First of all, he says, come unto me. Then he says, I will give you rest after you come into here. I mean, everybody, I, uh, I find people, uh, it's funny that you invite them to church and they say, well, I need to get a few things straightened out. I need to get a few things straightened out. I, I need to figure out my life. I need to get it on the right track. Uh, I say to you, you're never going to get it on the right track if you've got that mindset. You're never going to find, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, and uh, uh, I said it uh, uh, maybe this morning or, or in another uh, message, uh, uh, you, it says, come as you are. You'll never find that in the King James Version Bible. Come as you are. You'll never find that. that but we all heard that. But it does. Uh, but it, when he says, come unto me, he doesn't say stop and get, get yourself fixed up. Get yourself in a more noble matter. Put on a suit and tie. No. He doesn't mean that. He, come, he means come as you are. He means, uh, uh, and uh, we find that Jesus wants you to come as you are. Hey, uh, if you've been divorced here today, if you've had an abortion, if you've had a baby outside of marriage, if you've been a drunkard, if you've been a druggie, if you've been an adulterer, Jesus wants you to come as you are today. He don't want you to straighten up. You ain't going to straighten up those sins. Uh, you're not going to fix it on your own. There's only one source of heaven that can forgive you of those sins. He's the only one that can straighten you out. And his name's Jesus. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden. You know what? You'll never find... Uh, 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 you know why a lot of people don't want to go to church? Because they think they're not good enough for church. They think they're not good enough to church. Can I say to you, ain't none of us was good enough for church. I, 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 and a lot of people, and this is not... I thank God that I was brought to church as a kid. But you know what? As a 12-year-old boy, I was still lost and going to hell. I was by the world uh, what you would consider not that bad of a kid, but I was going to hell. But you know what? Jesus come to me just as he come to the drunkard in the street. Just as he come to the adulterer. Uh, just as he come to the lady by the well there. that She'd been married five times and the, woman that she, and the one that she was with now wasn't her husband. You know what? She could have never straightened out her situation. But then Jesus come by and he said, come unto me. You know what that lady, that, uh, uh, you know what she was doing? She was laboring and heavy laden. You know what? She couldn't find peace in no man. And I look at that, that story a little bit different than a lot of people. Uh, over there, the woman by the well, I look at it that uh, she was married five times because she ain't never met a man named Jesus. You know what? You ain't never going to find rest in a man or a woman till you meet a man named Jesus. You know what, uh, uh, and uh, hey, that's uh, I, the, all these AA programs, all these uh, uh, counseling and stuff like that, that is good and well in, in, in its place. But can I say to you, there's a man named Jesus. He said, come unto me. And I've never met a man named Jesus or uh, anybody else that can take a drunk and right into the church house and save him, and he leaves, not a drunkard no more. Have you, Brother Joe? Uh, hey, hey uh, you probably got a testimony just great, and uh, you might share that sometime. Uh, uh, but can I say to you, uh, I, I, you're never going to find peace. You're never going to get rid of those habits. You're never going to be good enough until you come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden. And I'm glad for that word all, because that covers from one end of the spectrum to the other. It doesn't matter uh, what race you are, what gender you are, what creed you come from. If you come unto Jesus, He'll take you as you are. You know what? You say, well, I don't have nothing to offer Him. I didn't either. <laughs> uh, I, I don't have anything. I can't preach Brother Jacob. I can't sing Brother Jacob. I can't testify. I can't do these things. Hey, I can't either. But there's a source from heaven that gives me the ability to do it. I, uh, and He can give it to you too if you'll come unto Him. But can I say to you, if you're the kid that you've never done anything, 
You've been brought up in church. Don't let a, a, a parents don't tell them that they're all right all the time. Nothing. Hey, don't ever tell them that they're perfect and they can't do no wrong. Because you know why? It's going to be hard for them to come to a place where they realize they're a sinner. Because all must come by way of the cross. Uh, can I say this to you? John G. Butler, uh, uh, this is to the saved people. Yes, we, be- we can become weary in His service, but we should never ever be weary of His service. Now, Christian, can I say to you today, there's going to be times that you get weary and you feel like you're burdened down from time to time. There's going to be even times that you're going to feel like you're just not be able to bear the burden that God has given you. But Jesus is also talking to you when He says, Come unto me. It's sad I find Christians here today that every time something bad happens in their life, whether it be financial, whether it be a, a hardship, whatever it may be, sickness, they run everywhere but into the one that says, Come unto me. Don't run from God when you find that your burdens are, are hard to keep. Run to God. You'll find David. You know what? David was a man after God's own heart. You know why David is considered a, a, a one of the greatest kings? And a lot of people look back to David and they think of Bathsheba and how he messed up. But you know what David did that's uh, is something that we all could learn to him? Every time that David messed up, you know who he ran to? God. He didn't run into his own way. David was always after God. He's always, God, fix this. I've done this. God, restore to me the joy of my salvation. God, do this. Hey, hey, if you find yourself that you're a Christian here today, and if you're lost, hey, if you've got a burden that you can't bear, come unto Him. Oh, you that labor and heavy laden. Uh, but uh, Christian, you're going to get weary. But can I say to you, don't run from God when the burdens are too hard to bear. Run to God. Don't run when the low. Hey, and then I'll throw this in there too. Uh, you'll find people that's like that. You'll find the, quite the opposite. Every time something's hard, they'll run to the altar. But then when the when the burden gets uh, when the, when the burden's lifted, they'll run from God. You'll find them not at the. Hey, when, run to God when the load is hard, uh, and then run to God uh, when uh, the load is light. Uh, can I say to you, Jesus is the source of your peace. Uh, and it's just like uh, uh, if you took some medicine for your blood pressure uh, and, and, uh, you ha- and your blood pressure was jacked up and, uh, and you started taking medicine and it got leveled out and for a little while and you think, well, I'll quit taking that blood pressure medicine. Then your blood pressure gets jacked up again because you took away the source that was controlling it. Jesus is the source of peace in your life. He's the only one that will give you rest. Now, can I say to you, it's not a difficult idea, but uh, can I say to you this uh, coming unto me? It's not a difficult, it's the most simplest thing you could ever do uh, in your life. But you know what? Usually people, they're too proud to admit they need help. You ain't never met nobody with a proud look, have you? Man, it's it's a tough crowd in here this morning. Man, I, hey, uh, you manly men in here, you ain't never once took a part or tried to do something on your truck and then messed it up and you think, how in the world am I going to get this fixed back? And you're too proud to call somebody that's got the tools to fix it. <laughs> Women, you ain't never said that, that you'll do something or bust to your husband and then when you mess it up and you can't fix it, you're too proud to ask your husband just to help you. Holly, she cracks me up. Hey, she lives in my house so she's free range to be in my messages. Holly's too short to reach something on the top cabinet. She's too proud to ask me to get it. And then, I'll, and then she'll finally come to the end of her pride about the time that she needs down off the shelf there. She'll say, Jacob. But we do the same with God. We're too proud. We're too... Brother, El, can I... Come here, Brother El. We're too... We're too proud. Got to tighten that up. We're, we're manly men. We're We're women. But can I say to you, God wants you to come unto Him. Hey, come unto Him when it's easy. Hey, when things are going smooth, hey, there's nothing rocky in my life right now. There might nothing be rocky in your life, but we are to come unto Him. Because I promise you, when the times get tough, it's going to be a whole lot easier to come unto Him when you've been with Him the whole time. Jesus said, I'll never leave nor forsake thee, but I found time and time again, I found myself leaving and forsaking Him. Sinner, you're never going to find peace within yourself until you follow Christ. Mark chapter 10, it talks of another situation, of another coming unto Him. 
And it, and it says, Mark chapter 10, verse 13, And they brought young children unto him, that he should teach th or touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and said unto him, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And I want you to notice something here. And it said, and they brought young children. You know who that is? That's parents. That was the parents of those young children, more than likely. Can I say to you, parent here today, the most important duty you ever have in your life is to bring that child to church. Bring them unto Jesus. Bring them to God. Bring them, to God. I, I bring them and teach them about Jesus. Because I, 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 I'm telling you, when they get older uh, and you might not be around, they can get on their knees uh, and they can pray, God help me uh, because I've got a problem. Hey, don't be just a parent that brings them to church and then when you leave, uh, uh, well, everything's just back to normal. Uh, we forget all that church stuff. But bring them up that when you go through a hard time, they'll look at mom and dad and say, Mom and dad prayed to God when we went through a hard time. They didn't run from church. But can I say to you, if you'll teach them children that they can go to God and they can depend on God, when they get older, they'll go to God. That's what it's like, train up a child. Train up a child that it knows where to go to. Train up a child. But then uh, it says uh, that he should touch them and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. They wanted Christ to bless the little children. That's what he means by touch them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me. And forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Hey, you know what that means there? That means church people rebuked them, didn't want them to bring. Hey, uh, you, might have, uh, you may have had a situation where a church person or a, uh, maybe a preacher, maybe a deacon, maybe somebody in a church that they hindered your walk with God. They might have even rebuked you from coming to church. Can I say to you, in the first place, if they rebuked you from coming or if they, uh, uh, if, they, if they told you not to come or if they did something like that, they're probably not saved in the first place. But we do find that it was the disciples that rebuked them. And there has been saved people that they've hindered, uh, lost people from coming to church. They've hindered other people. But then we find that what Jesus said, and I want you to know this, that go into this with this thought. You come to church for Jesus, not for the other people that's in there. If you're coming to church for Jacob Shelton, you come for the wrong reason. If you come to church uh, 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 for a social club, I promise you there's better social clubs you'll find in this town. Uh, but if you come to church to serve a man named Jesus, uh, the Lord and, and Savior of us, you come for the right reason here today. But he, then he said, uh, that he said, suffer, the, uh, that means permit them, the little children to come under me and forbid them not, of such is the kingdom of heaven. He says they belong to the kingdom of heaven. Can I say to you, if you're lost here today and you come unto Him and you, uh, and you repent of your sins, you belong to Him. No matter what nobody ever says about you. You say, well, there's no way I could... Uh, uh, I might have a bad reputation out in this community. I might, have, uh, I, I, might, uh, I might not look good for the church. Hey, can I say to you, we want to... Hey, you know what uh, Jesus did? He got a bunch of misfits and got them together and He made 12 disciples out of them. Hey, uh, you know what? Uh, if you look around, you'll find a bunch of misfits in this church. Preacher called me a misfit. I can't believe that. But we are. You know why? Because God put us together this morning. Hey, you may have thought you brought yourself to church here today. You may have thought you brought to... But can I say to you, God ordained it before the beginning time that you'd be here today to hear this message. Come unto Him. Bring them unto Him. Bring your children unto Him. But don't, hey, don't just bring them unto Him. Hey, you, hey, we all know that the saying, do as I say, not as I do. Parent, don't be a hypocrite. Bring them unto Him. Show them. Be a real parent. Be, show them what it is to be a Christian because they belong to the kingdom of God. But then we find that Jesus allows them to come unto Him. And, uh, but last of all, can I say to you, at church, are you asking people to come unto Him? If you're a Christian here today, are you begging people to come unto Him? And we probably all know it. Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And that him that is a thirst, Come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. I find a, a, a familiar uh, saying in these uh, three scriptures, Come. Who are you coming to? Come to God. 
Come to Jesus. Uh, 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 hey, simply come as you are. Uh, uh, hey, if you're laboring, you're heavy laden, you're trying to figure out your life, you're trying to provide for your young'un, you know what? The, the only way you're ever going to provide for your kids uh, or provide for your family is if you come to God. Hey, I found uh, uh, that uh, when, I was, uh, when I was working hourly out there at the plant, I could go work at double time on Sunday. I could do it, and I liked it too. It was pretty nice. But you know what? I found that I'm not a bit richer than when I started. I found that when I was doing that, that my walk with God was hindered. My relationship with my wife was hindered. I, w I didn't have the ability to be a daddy because I was too dog tired. When you're too focused on making a life and making a living that you forget who you're supposed to come to, something's wrong. And you're never going to get to a place where you figure out life. You're never going to get to a place where you're good enough, so to say. But can I ask you, of you, simply, come unto me, all you that labor heavy laden. And I'm glad that it's a everybody. Everybody in this church could be saved today if they wanted to be. Because Jesus has, he has no, uh, uh, he, he, he doesn't ma it doesn't matter where you come from, who you come from, or what you're going to do. Hey, Jesus loves you today. There's not a lot of people that might love you out there in the world. Hey, if you're dependent on the government to love you, you're in the wrong place. But there's a man in heaven, or there's a God in heaven that loves you. And he come down as a man, gave his life on a cross at Calvary to save your sins. Simply come unto him. How do you come unto him, you say, preacher? Come to the altar. Say, God, forgive me of my sins. I believe that you're the Lord of my life. I want you to be the, my Savior. That's all you have to do. It's a simple prayer. If there's been something knocking at your heart here today, come unto him. Come unto him that all the labor and heavy laden. Father, I thank you and praise you for another day of life. God, I beg of you, Lord, that you would uh, work on the hearts and minds here today. Lord, we're to simply come to you. If there be one that doesn't know you as Savior today, please let him come. Please let him come to the altar. Lord, we preach the gospel the best that we can. God, their soul needs rest. Their mind needs rest. God, they're not going to find it till they come to you. God, I beg of you, help us this hour. God, do that work that only you can. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed.